It's mind-blowing to think about how old these institutions are here. How beautiful is this cathedral? It can get quite violent. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are in a beautiful, beautiful place in Tuscany. We keep exploring Tuscany and we came to Siena. It's the first ever time for me to visit this fantastic city and I'm so excited to explore it together with you. So guys, if you're ready, let's go and explore Siena together. One tip I can give you right away, guys, if you're coming to Siena by car, you can leave your car a little bit outside of the city, outside the city walls, to avoid entering the limited traffic zone. And there is a moving stairs that will take you all the way up to the city. And we're now going to go and find this secret passage. So guys, here it is. And I think it's so convenient that you can actually uh, get up there this way without the need to climb all the stairs up to the city. This passage to get to the city reminds me of Orvieto, a lovely city in Umbria that I visited a few years ago. And I would absolutely love to go there to film a new vlog. So let me know in the comments if you'd like it. And don't forget to subscribe not to miss any other travel vlog. In the meantime, guys, look how beautiful these streets are. I already can say that Siena is gonna be absolutely splendid. According to the local legend, Siena was founded by Sinius and Ascius, sons of Remus and thus nephews of Romulus, after whom Rome was called. After the death, after the murder of their father, uh, it is said that they fled Rome and escaped here to Siena, bringing with them the Capitoline wolf and thus appropriating this symbol to the city of Siena. So guys, we're gonna go and find the Capitoline wolf here because I know that there should be at least several of them. Guys, how beautiful is this cathedral? It's absolutely stunning. Honestly, it's probably one of the most beautiful cathedrals I've ever seen in Italy and in other countries as well. Just look at this facade. I have no words. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, two things to tell you about this cathedral. This is the cathedral or the Duomo of uh, Siena. Its construction began in the 12th century and it was finished in the 14th. However, there was a very ambitious project that had to transform this cathedral into the biggest church of its time. Makes me think of Bologna. Do you remember a very similar story about San Petronio Cathedral from another uh, walking tour of mine from Bologna? I will leave you a link up here if you haven't watched it so you can check it out. And yeah, objectively, it's more beautiful. It might not be bigger, but it's uh, it's absolutely spectacular. I have absolutely no words and I need to go inside and check it out from the inside because it's fantastic. The second important thing to tell you about this cathedral, guys, the Capitoline Wolf is promised. I found it. The entrance ticket cost me 7 euros, so it's quite pricey. However, it's absolutely worth it because the cathedral is absolutely beautiful and the floors, guys, here are absolutely special. They use a special mosaic technique dating back to the 14th century. Just can you imagine? As I said, guys, inside this cathedral is as beautiful as outside and truly it's one of the most beautiful cathedrals ever seen. Uh, inside you can also find uh, a little uh, library, like a book collection, which is called Libreria Piccolomini. And it's absolutely mandatory to visit it because you'll see some of the most 
awesome frescoes on the walls and a fantastic book collection of very ancient uh, rare books. Also a little tip for you guys, we've spent quite a lot of time looking for the ticket office and if you're facing the cathedral you can find it basically behind on its left. So make sure to uh, get your ticket first and then you can enter the cathedral and don't waste your time looking elsewhere. Guys, we are approaching one of the most important uh, points here in Siena and one of those that I'm most excited about, Piazza del Campo, the central piazza, the central place of the city. And guys, look how beautiful is it. Guys, look at this beautiful, beautiful place. I am absolutely in love with Siena, with Piazza del Campo. Historically, it's been a super important place because uh, this piazza was chosen like as a reference point in the center of the city since it did not belong to any of the contrade of uh, the city wards, the various the quarters of the city. And it was kind of like an independent area and thus was chosen as the reference point for the city center and today it's clearly a place where so many people like to just come and relax and chill on a warm sunny day like this one. Siena is also famous for the Palio, a horse race that is held twice each year here in Piazza del Campo. There are 10 horses and riders riding bareback and dressed in appropriate colors representing 10 of the 17 contrada, 17 areas of the city. And the whole city animates a lot for this event. They have to uh, circle this piazza three times and it doesn't take more than 90 seconds usually. And uh, it can get quite violent because some jockeys are thrown off the, the horseback. And it's a very common thing that the horse arrives without the jockey to the finish line. But still, you know, it's a, a local speciality, a local special event. And it represents the city so well, I think. And if you guys want to come here and witness it, you should absolutely do so. Also, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to come here for the Palio and make a vlog from there as well, because I think that's a very interesting thing. I've never witnessed anything like this. And yeah, I'd love to come here for the Palio. Maybe this summer, who knows? Guys, Siena is pretty busy. It's Saturday and it might not be as touristy as Florence, but there are quite a lot of people. And the waiting times to get a table at the restaurant are very, very long. So we decided to opt for a takeaway instead of a full-on meal. And I got myself a panino with lampredotto, obviously, because we're in Tuscany. And this is the most uh, typical thing you can think of when visiting Tuscany. And if you haven't seen yet, I have a special food vlog from Tuscany where I was trying lampredotto and various things with lampredotto. So I will leave you a link up here. Go check it out after watching this video. In the meantime, we're gonna try this panino because I've tried lampredotto many times, but I have never tried panino with lampredotto. Guys, I have to admit, it's very tasty, it's very, very good. I found a prosciutteria right nearby, basically around the corner from Piazza del Campo, and there are lots of people here now having their lunch. So I think it's a pretty common thing here. I highly recommend you to visit this prosciutteria. Inside it looks like this. Basically it has lampredotto and the green sauce and everything. So I highly recommend you this kind of a takeaway, quick lunch on the go if you're visiting Siena, but if you don't have time, or if you don't want to waste time waiting in the lines. Did you guys know that Siena is not only home to one of the oldest universities in the world, but also to one of the oldest banks in the world? I feel like Tuscany, both Florence and Siena have always been known for their bankers, for their bankers' families. Uh, and here, the Bank Monte dei Paschi is one of the oldest banks in the world, still uh, continuing its work these days and I think this is absolutely amazing. This place 
used to be the original headquarters and it's still in the possession of the bank. And guys, just think of it for a moment. This palace uh, has been this bank's seat since the 14th century and still today you can see their name on uh, its walls and still today it's basically one of the seats of the bank. It's mind-blowing to think about how old these institutions are here. I absolutely love it about Italy. I've always imagined Siena as a rather sophisticated city and uh, I think it truly is because the architecture and everything is quite sophisticated but also it gives me such a useful vibe probably because of the students because as I said one of the oldest universities in the world is located in Siena and there are lots of young people which I love a lot because you know there is this special energy to the city uh, that is inhabited by lots of young people. Yeah, also there are clearly lots of tourists, uh, but you know, it doesn't uh, make your experience any worse. I mean, there are lots of tourists, but somehow there are no crowds and you, like, personally, I'm not bothered at all by the amount of tourists here. Obviously, guys, I couldn't avoid a mandatory coffee break while being here in Siena. And do you remember what I just said about the sophistication of this city? I think we found a pretty sophisticated coffee shop here. I like it. Uh, and I got this um, hazelnut pastry. What's really interesting is that despite this coffee shop being right in the city center and looking pretty sophisticated, the prices here are very normal, more than average, no, even below average probably. And now we're gonna try it. Looks really good. What do you think? It's really good. I really like it. Very tasty. The hazelnut cream inside is very, very good, very fresh, and it's full of the cream, which is good news. So now, guys, cheers. There is a curious fact about the majority of more or less big Italian cities. They all have at least one Pope uh, coming from that place and locals are usually, hopefully, proud of him. Not always, but usually. Here in Siena, this place is no different and uh, one of the Popes, Pope Pius II, was from Siena. And guys, I have a really curious story featuring this historical figure in my vlog from Rimini, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. I will leave you a link up here and in the description box. I'm not gonna talk about him anymore here. However, I have a little story for you in another video. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you like this vlog from Siena. I absolutely love this city and uh, this day and I hope to be back here one day, maybe soon, because there is so much more to see here and I feel like you need more than one day actually to explore the city fully. Uh, there are lots of cute artisanal shops that I'd love to explore and other stuff and uh, I highly recommend you to come here and to see this place for yourselves. As of late, I've been spending quite a lot of time in Tuscany and I can tell you that Siena, yes, it's a very Tuscan town, city, but uh, also it's so different. It's very intense, if you know what I mean, uh, and it's, it's very characteristic. I feel like it has its own personality that you won't find anywhere else in Italy or in Tuscany, and I love it. So guys, if you want to see more vlogs from Tuscany, if you want to see more vlogs from Italy and hopefully not only Italy in the nearest future, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to get the notifications of all the upcoming videos. And as usual, don't forget to put a thumbs up, comment and share this video with your friends. Thank you guys for being here and enjoy your day.